Hi, I'm Brett. And I'm Jen. We're Journey with the G's. And life is too short to not see the Grand Canyon. <laughs> and if you like to hike or run, then it's too short to not hike or run across it, guys. So today we're going to talk about our experience hiking the Grand Canyon from the North Rim to the South Rim in one day. It is 24-ish miles, 6,000 6, feet, feet of elevation of decline. Oh, right, yeah. And then 4,000-ish feet of incline. Yeah, at least going from the North Rim to the South Rim, it's a little bit, uh, it's not as high. So. Yep. Uh, so big disclaimer, um, you know, we did it in one day, so that's a, it's a tough hike, right? Um, that's a lot of elevation and a lot of miles. And there's also heat that affects a lot of people at the bottom of the Grand Canyon where heat gets trapped. So it, it is a very tough hike. We'll go through in this video, we'll talk about ways that we trained, the gear we used, where we stayed, how we got there, things like that, what we learned. But we just want you to, you guys to know, you know, we're trying to provide this information, sharing it with you all. Hopefully it can help you. It's definitely a no, by no means a, you have to do it this way. And there's a lot of other resources out there. So, you know, keep looking for, for resource, other resources and, and making sure that you're doing training for yourself. Um, but you know, just kind of taking what we're saying as a, you know, one person's experience or two people's experience and, um, take it with a little bit of grain of salt and hopefully you can get something from it and it can encourage you and teach you a little bit. So the training that we did was different for both of us. Um, but the things you do need to consider are the distance and the elevation and the heat. So we started training in Florida which doesn't have a lot of elevation. Right. So we were looking at the miles that we could do there. And then as we got to areas that did have elevation, we increased sequentially as we went. And I think we got up to maybe 20, 22 miles, somewhere around there. And in the last month, we kind of broke it up. We were in Zion and Arches, and so we would do multiple shorter hikes during the week instead of one hike each weekend is about right. what we did. Um, we each kind of did different training. Brett did more heat and weight training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was like carrying, um, so I would wear a sweatshirt while I was hiking and while everybody else thought I was crazy, <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't really, I wasn't affected by the heat in the box or at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, right? Um, and it wasn't just wearing a sweatshirt during training, during a hike, it was wearing a sweatshirt throughout the rest of the week, just so I was normally used to being a little bit warmer. The only other thing that I would add is we took off about 10 days before the hike. Uh, some training plans for races, what have you, they'll have you taper off and sometimes mm -hmm. take off beforehand. So right. Give your body a rest. Right. So to just summarize, those are the three things that you're training for, the distance, the elevation, getting the up and down, because that's, those are different on your body, and then the heat also. And then, well, I guess the next thing is just using the gear that you're going to be carrying so that you're used to it on the day of the hike, whether it's the socks or the shoes or the shorts or shirt, backpack, all of that, even the food that you eat, train eating that food because you don't want to get on the on the hike day and then not have experience, you know, tasting something that your friend gives you and it gives you an upset stomach. So those are the things to consider with training. Yeah. So now we're gonna tell you about the gear that we personally took onto the trail. First, I did use my Fitbit. I have the Ionic Fitbit, so it's waterproof. Um, I will say it did, the battery did not last all day. It was fully charged when I hit the trail. I would recommend it for training, and it was helpful while it was still working. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> so it took us about 16 hours, I think, to actually finish, and that could be... Why? And the Fitbit just basically for training tracked Miles, distance, elevation, heart uh, rate, heart rate right, right. right. But but you know, do you really need to know all of that 
during, during the Grand Canyon hike. Not so much. You really don't need to know the miles or the elevation. It's right. all really <laughs> clearly marked. It the is. trails are wide. Right. They get walked on by hundreds of people a day, probably. Right. There's signs, so you don't need it for you that purpose. You don't need it for that, but um, I do recommend it for the training mm-hmm. for the Grand Canyon and really anything that you're training for. Love this. Love the Fitbit. Also want to talk about my backpack. Awesome. Super awesome. It is the Camelback Lux. It is a woman's cycling backpack. Um, It has a lot of different pockets and pouches and things. It has mesh and a nice kind of vented. Mesh right here. This is also kind of stiff. Yeah. I mean, it gives, it's padded, but it's it's a little stiff, yeah. right? Which is good. It kind of, um, in some ways, it, it matches the contours of your back, but it also, by being stiff with those meshed areas, it allows air to get through there, unlike something that would just fold and sit right against your body. It came with, it is a three liter water resource, and I got the tube here. Um, nice big pouch here I would put my I put my sandwiches peanut butter and honey sandwiches a water bottle in here in this portion I put more of the snacks we'll show you those in a minute and then on the front it does clip little pocket so I put another water bottle in here a lot of times we just stuff your phone here like during training in during this, training, that. during training, but it, during the, the hike, you actually did. You put I, your. I had a fanny pack. Oh, uh, okay. Because my for your phone, my clothes that I wore did not have pockets. So, so, so great backpack, guys. Really I've, great. I've actually used this backpack for. Love this backpack. Um, I didn't use it. Obviously, I didn't use it for the Grand Canyon. <laughs> she was using it. Um, but I've actually used that backpack for longer trail runs that I've done. Uh, the Zion Traverse I did with that backpack, and that's thirty-seven miles. And then running around Mount Hood, that's 42 miles. So, um, and that thing's freaking awesome. I don't care if it's a woman's backpack, <laughs> it's teal or something. It's just a color, and it might fit women a little differently on I the think chest. It's the cut, I don't know. Yeah. Oh well, I didn't complain. It was great for me, <laughs> guys. I'm telling you, it's or women, people listening. It's an amazing backpack. No. Uh, I will show you my backpack. Now, ju- this is just like, I'm not promoting this or like affiliate <laughs> marketing or anything like that. But just to give you an idea, you really can do this, the Grand Canyon with a hiking yeah. pack. This is just like a little day pack. Yeah, I think it's um, it's by Jan Sport. It's a, called a Solstice 33. And it just has a lot of space. I think it's 33 liter. Yeah, th- usually if it says 33 it's 33 liters um and you bought space, a camelback so. just a separate camelback yeah i put a camelback in here in but it just shows and this is really flimsy it doesn't have all kinds of mesh but you know i'm kind of more like no frills um and i don't need a lot of have. fancy stuff i use what yeah. i've got and i just want to show you something like that can be used too if you know yourself and you know that you're the type of person that's going to be okay using it and again going back to what we said with training train with what you're going to use and so i trained with Absolutely. that a lot uh, uh we also want to show the shoes that we each used <clears throat> i have merrill wildwood um now i did get some wearing here uh the fronts kind of blew out but just training for the Grand Canyon, I did 220 miles mm-hmm. plus the Grand Canyon and hikes since then. And I mean, they were maybe, I don't remember how much they were, but definitely worked for me. Yeah. I liked them. And good tread on the bottom oh, too. Oh, the tread right? is, the, the tread, tread is, is great. is awesome. Yeah. So. Uh, I highly recommend them. I like them. Um, I, I don't know what the drop is or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the drop is. Maybe we could find out. There is a yeah. bit of a drop from the back to the front. Uh, that something. But to I be. was I was fine in them. Uh, I'll show you my shoes. So my shoes, guys, are these Altras, um, and I think they're superior. What? I love the tread, the little footy. Oh yeah, it's a cute little tread, right? Now a lot of this tread is actually worn, um, but it it was really good and it's really sticky kind of tread. 
um, which is what I wanted. But I, I've ran it. I've ran on so many other surfaces since then um, that it is kind of wearing down. There's also a very small drop, and I don't know what the drop is here, but it's very small. So I do want to address that. You know, if you again, you want to train in what you're going to use, and you want to do that gradually. If you go to a, uh, a regular shoe where your heel is up high and your front is down low, you, you go from something like that to this where it's pretty much flat all the way across, that can really stretch out your Achilles tendon right here in the back, right? Because your shoe is now sitting like this, stretching out that Achilles. So again, it just goes back to training and what you're gonna use. Um, but these are actually trail running shoes and they were still great for me. The padding was fine. Um, the stability was fine. The traction was fine. Awesome. I think they're the ultra superiors. Okay, we'll, we'll link that below. We'll link all mm -hmm. of our gear below. Everything that we've talked about that we would recommend, we're, we'll link down below. I also used a cooling rag. Mm, um, yep. I did overheat at one point, and my friend had an extra cooling rag. We'll find out exactly which one it was and link that below. Uh, we don't have any specific ones to recommend but we do mm -hmm. recommend you take a headlamp yep. and a first aid kit and the reason is guys if you're going to try to do this in a day <laughs> you might be out there unless you're really moving it you might be out there a little bit before sun up or a little after sundown right especially if you've been taking pictures and photos pictures and photos <laughs> pictures and videos with your phone it might be low on battery right um and then you said first aid kit oh first aid kit so uh it, it's we kind of had that concept of it's you know i have a just experience with the marines and being in scouts and stuff like that of just being prepared and better to have something and not need it um and we have been on hikes and runs before where somebody got injured and you know was bleeding and eventually needed stitches that stuff can happen and it's just better to have some bandages they don't weigh a lot that you know have some bandages that you can use um and so you, now you don't need a survival kit you're not out there <laughs> building a shelter and you know, a, 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 a blanket for warmth or anything like that or a saw to cut anything down you don't need that kind of stuff but just some basic band-aids and bandages or something like that benadryl and ibuprofen is a good idea yeah. <laughs> also just yeah. for muscle cramps or something right. like that any right. pain next we want to talk about the food that we took on the actual hike I uh, will say make sure you test out this food on your training hike so you know how it will affect you. Um, Especially when you're heated, when you're yes. hot. <laughs> yes. Because that's sometimes hard to eat food. Right. One of the main things that we took is the, the major food kind of major food. Major food. <laughs> the main food of substance that we took was peanut butter and honey. It's a, gr a sandwiches. It sits well. It um, it stores well. Yeah, you've you, got you've got the a, sugars from the honey. Yeah. Um, you've got the carbs, which are gonna turn to sugars too. But um, you've got some protein in there with the with the peanut butter. You got some fats with the peanut butter for sure. So I mean, it's a great it's great great little thing. great yeah. great. I will say I couldn't eat peanut butter and honey for several months after. Right, after. I was a little done with peanut butter and honey. Not after. just because of the Grand Canyon, but, but you're the training too. Because the training, having, During having the training. them every week or every few days leading up to it. Yeah. So much peanut butter and honey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the other food? So that's like the main regular food that we took, right? right? And then we took a lot of other trail foods um, and like sport kind of endurance foods. The first is goo. Yep, these are awesome. Now they're light. Now it's a uh, liquid. How much do these weigh? They're really they are yeah, super light. One point one ounce. Yep. One point one ounce, and it's got one hundred calories. Yeah, all of these okay. that we have right now are a hundred calories. Now each one is different in what it has. This one here, the caramel macchiato, has caffeine in it. Um, they all have sodium and amino acids. Um, again, test them out, see which ones you like. Uh, we'll say the best flavor, <laughs> birthday cake. Yeah. It was good, that I'll admit it was so, good. So, so good. strawberry banana was really good too. Yeah. That's all I gotta yeah. say. <laughs> there, there's a lot of good flavors. 
and they they sit pretty well. And it, they've got a couple of other things. It's some sugar, some quick sugars. Right. I mean, the main thing is maltodextrin, right? Water and fructose. But it does have the salt. It's got the. Uh, but it has other things um, like uh, potassium, magnesium. Yeah. So not just the sodium. So it, these are great guys. Yeah. We also like the Cliff blocks. Mm -hmm. really now, fun. <laughs> just like the goo, they have additional things. Sodium. These are a higher, so three times the sodium. Um, they average about 30 to 33 calories for each little block. And, you know, the blocks are, are, they're small. Yeah, so um, about 30, get 30 to 33 per block. Um, and th this is a good flavor, Yeah, too. our favorite is margarita. Margarita. Right it's good. <laughs> But um, um, it does have two servings, right? So it's got six blocks total. So this packet right here basically has a total of um, 180, 180 calories. calories. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they also come with caffeine as well. And again, mm, try them out beforehand so you know. Um, for another thing of food, because those you can get kind of tired of. It's A lot of them are sweet. But just, I don't know. I got tired Some of them. Some people get tired of them. We love... These are fun. The Stroop waffles. <laughs> yeah. Again, I mean, all of these things that we're sharing have sodium, amino acids, some have caffeine. They're to help replenish you on the day. But yeah. this is more like a food instead of a goo. Yeah. Yeah. That, it, it's, it's good, but the only good. bad thing is it's so small and it's it just goes small, away so fast. <laughs> and it also, I mean, it, it falls apart really fast yeah. this one has just been sitting in our cabinet and it's crumbling I'm already right. i want to eat it every day <laughs> i'm probably gonna eat it after the video these i do eat sometimes even when i'm not <laughs> hiking because these are good too just regular cliff bars guys yeah so um we'll put a link to them but i mean yeah. you know it's great because like this one's got 260 calories um some carbs a little bit of protein some fats it tastes good Right, and yeah. that, that's really important. You want something that, that you're gonna enjoy the taste right. of when you're working out like that. Yeah. So, oh, and one one other thing is like we use these little baggies, and uh, I would recommend bringing some of these because we, you know, once you open up these cliff blocks, and let's just say you eat one or two, well, you don't want the others sliding out and then getting all over your backpack or whatever. So we would just put a, put them in a yeah. little baggie, and then. But the other thing is, this little baggie kind of becomes like a little trash bag. Because right. when you're in like in the heat of the moment <laughs> hiking and you're tired, like you've got a wrapper from this, uh, a, yeah. a half-eaten peanut butter sandwich that you don't care about anymore, and then you're just telling your friend like, "I don't care, just throw the you know throw the wrapper back there," right. and like your your backpack becomes like a war zone back there. So just <laughs> it's dirty and sweaty and like wrappers all over the place. Bring some of these. But the other thing that we do with these is I would use um, some of these to carry the next item, which is one of my favorites, and it is the Tailwind. Okay, guys, so I think this was maybe originally for cyclists, but basically it's for endurance sports, um, distance runs. You can use it for hikes. So, again, going back, I'm not really like a big frills kind of – I don't need expensive stuff, complicated stuff. You just – I, I, I don't need that. So your wife, I had a, is, your wife is complicated enough. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I had a friend that recommended, Brett, yeah, you got to get this Tailwind stuff. And I was like, I'm not buying all that. Ex I'm not, I, I don't need that. It's too expensive. I'll just, yeah, I'll just, I'll eat a peanut butter sandwich. I'm glad I started buying this. Okay. <laughs> um, it tastes great. It's just a little powder. Comes with a scoop. Um, like. Little bitty guy. Like this. Bloop. Cutie pie. And um, it's just like one of these scoops, one little scoop you... Or two. Is, well, the well, one, scoop one scoop is 100 calories, okay? So along with some sugars for calories, it's also got uh, sodium, potassium, things like that, right? other, other things that you'll need. Um, and it tastes good. It mixes with the water easily, which you got to be drinking the water anyways. And it doesn't weigh a lot. So I think, like ounce for ounce, like as far as weight, weight goes, yeah, it's one of the lightest things, yeah, yeah for yeah. weight to calories ratio, it's like one of the best options. So. Uh, another thing that we used a lot. The noon tablets. The noons. Yep. Um, they're not nuns. They're I think they're noons. So stop uh, calling them nuns. Just a tablet, 
you would break it in half, drop, drop it in your water bottle, and... Yeah, that it. also has... It's not a lot of calories. This is more like it's your, more your, your you electrolytes. It's sodium, your, and you're hydrating, magnesium. yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of the stuff you might think of with right. inside of a Gatorade. Uh, we don't have links for them but we did some salt tablets or our friends yes. brought salt, salt tablets we did i don't think either of us took one that day no but salt tablets but are important a, because yeah another thing to just consider in looking at what's going to be helpful to you you might not like the noons and a salt tablet is better the other thing you have to consider is the water um, there are a number of water sources on the trail. Uh, we do recommend checking the Grand Canyon National yes. Park site because they do have updates of when they're turning the water on and turning it off. Their time frame for, I think, all of the open water sources is about May 15th to October 15th, but check Some, it check yeah, it before sometimes, you go sometimes sometimes the, the pipe might be messed up right, or doing repairs right. or whatever it is so just check that the day before any of, i mean if you can the day of um and, and and know where those water stations are there's enough water stations as far as water that we brought with us you carried your three liters in your camel back with and an then additional... you also carried two half liter bottles right right mm -hmm. and that was way more than enough way more yeah i think the farthest distance that you go without water is seven miles I think it's like seven miles and so you know you could figure well what if that water station is down and I end up having to go like you know 11 or 14 miles which is a very real possibility yeah. but you know probably three liters is enough well I think again this it goes, go back, it goes to back to training to yeah what do you need in your training yeah so that's a big one is is realizing how much water figuring out how much yeah. water do you drink during training is it is it half a liter is it a liter an hour right and so uh, if you figure you're hiking at like two miles an hour well then in an hour you go two and you know in in three hours you've gone six miles and and maybe you're out of your three liters now so just getting that figured out and dialed in yep. so let's talk about um, lodging and transportation we stayed at an RV park that <laughs> what do <are> you <laughs> well, I said I was going to eat it after the video I literally said in the video I've been looking at that thing for months to eat <laughs> or at least every day <laughs> I, this is not what they can't. Do you I'm see really yourself good. on like video? Yeah, no, I do. And you're proud of what you mm -hmm. see here? Yeah. So we stayed <laughs> in our RV at the Grand Canyon Camper Village. That was only about 15 minutes. 10 it was to 15 really close. Minutes to the southern rim. Right. It's only like five minutes or a few minutes from the gate to get mm -hmm. into the, the yep. Grand Canyon National Park. And so it's, it, that was a good a, a good RV park. Yeah. Um, they had enough amenities and... Uh, Full hookups. Yeah. So transportation, we... We then, the day before, we parked at the on the southern rim in Lot D, which is near the backcountry permit wilderness area and that was at the that was near the trailhead for bright angel correct right and so maybe a quarter of a mile to a third half roughly. of a mile from the trailhead and you are you're able to park overnight again check the website and see if there's any restrictions there if anything's changed we didn't have any trouble um, then we walked over to the bright angel lodge where I don't know Oh. Then we walked <laughs> I over. I didn't know where you were going with this. <laughs> then we walked over to the Bright Angel Lodge with all of our luggage. Oh, yes. And we picked up the Trans Canyon Shuttle. Now, there, there's a few companies that offer transportation from one side to the other. From one room to the other. And that drive is like a four-hour drive yeah. because they have to go south uh, to where they can get across and then and then go back up. They have a couple of stops on that drive uh, where you'll they'll stop at a gas station. I think an hour van there might have been about ten people Something maybe 
Um, it's Something a pretty like big that. passenger van. We don't know yeah, if we, we know. were separated by... But we were wearing masks in the van. You, we wore masks mm-hmm. the whole time. Um, yeah, so I don't and know... That, I that don't know if they... van ride costed about a... I think it was three or four hundred for the four of us. So about a hundred each. It, it was something like I that. I mean, you got to get it, right? there. There is another option, which, you know, it's up to you if you want to do it, but some people catch a ride from someone else, right? So you, that is something to consider. And there is a Grand Canyon Rim to Rim, maybe Rim to Rim to Rim Facebook group. Uh, oh, we'll yeah. also link that. You're a member of that, mm-hmm. so... They, they have some good posts there, so you might be yep. able to Pe- find a ride that People way. People will post on there, hey, I'm going on this date. Is there anyone who's going to be, is there anyone that's going to be parked at this side of the Grand Canyon to give me a ride? And then we stayed at the Grand Canyon Lodge on the North Rim. Um, that was fun, guys. It was a really It's really fun pretty. Lodge. It's a neat lodge. You're right Re- there. See the view. Across the yeah. Grand Canyon. Just, it, it, it's a neat lodge. It was they, cool. Um, I think you have to get reservations to eat in the dining room. In the room, dining room. But in they the also evening. have a cafe. Oh, yes. It in, is during the evening. So yes. when we went, they had open seating where the restaurant is. And we were able to hang out in there before our room was ready. Um, but at, in the evening, it changes to the restaurant. And at that location, you also have um, some bathrooms, some public bathrooms. And then you also have a cafe where you can go get... Um, pizza and, and yeah, more of whatever. a fast service. And cafe. they also have a, a like a little bar tavern kind of thing yeah. uh, where you can go get some beers. So uh, really cool. And then obviously the lodge that you're staying in, whatever room that you're staying in, will have bathrooms and beds. But Shower. they, uh, however, it will not have some things. We were not, which we we'll talk remember, about right. on our in a minute a little we, bit later yeah we'll talk when we about talk what, about what the lodge rooms did not have that we and were, what we would change that we were hoping they would just just some of the advice so, there um so then that's wanna, more day of i think we're good on i think we were kind of looking yeah. about at each other <laughs> so i i think that's it <laughs> moving on it's about the hike itself sound clap so cool now we're going to talk about the actual day of the hike our experience and again this is what happened to us so one thing we did not talk about in the transportation section is if you stay in the north rim lodge right you have to get to the trail the north kaibab 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 i think to the trailhead from the lodge is about 2.2 miles that's yeah. what google says so it's another thing to consider in your logistics. Yeah, so if the hike is 24 around. to 26 miles already and then you're adding on another two, just be prepared for that. I mean, you're, you're adding on two miles and that's before you even start dropping into the Grand Canyon. So a couple of options are, well, one, leave earlier and walk that. Um, which is what we were going to do, right. which is what we did. Yeah, we, we started doing that. We started walking, got up about 334 and started walking it's relatively flat i think yeah yeah and as we just kind of followed the road we had our headlamps on Mm -hmm. um and there were a couple of cars that passed and we were wondering like oh darn it would be nice if we could get a ride toss out the thumb (laughs) (laughs) right and there was a car yeah minivan that pulled over they said you want a ride and we yeah i think that the ladies in that minivan had just given a ride to their friends to go to the trailhead I and think. then and they I were so. coming back and they saw us and then they gave us a And ride. then they said, "Well, let's just go back and forth and take people." So, so cool. you might luck out. <laughs> so cool. You might luck out, but it's another consideration right. of getting the transportation. Um, so we started the actual hike at about 4:30 a.m. Um, so mm-hmm. it was dark at it this point. It was just getting It was getting light. It was, it was not sunrise, but it was getting yeah. light. I think we only had the headlamps on for about Maybe an 15. Hour? Oh. oh, no. Call it in the middle, 30. About 30 minutes. Okay. All right, deal. A little while. About 30 minutes before <laughs> uh, it started getting light enough to turn off the headlamps. Um, and even at that point, it was still not sunrise. We chose the north rim first because um, it would be, uh, it's, I, I believe it's a little bit longer. And um, and it's up higher than the south rim. So longer doing, decline. Yes, longer in miles. And um, so 
because it's longer mileage, but you still got to get the same elevation decline, it's a little bit more gradual. Um, and then... So it was chilly when we started. Right. I started in pants and a long sleeve. I can't remember if I brought my sweatshirt or a three-quarter length kind of t-shirt type thing. Um, I had them on maybe an hour or so. And it was taken off I took layers. off the long sleeve. <laughs> So it's just something to consider. I don't think I had any extra layers just because, and it goes back to me, just like the way that I prepare for something. It's like, oh, instead of carrying all that extra weight, I'm just going to prepare myself, my body for it. So and you need to have room it to just, carry. It's up to you. you got to train that way, and you know how your body reacts. So, so you just made room to carry my long sleeve. Did I have to carry it? I think your... you carried it. Anyway, um, <laughs> which is another reason why I trained with heavier weight because yeah. I wanted to be able to carry some of her stuff if she wanted. Yeah. So, I will say I loved pretty much every minute of this hike. No matter was, where amazing, you are oh. on the trail, there is something beautiful to see. Yeah, amazing things. Uh, our friend was a little concerned about one portion that had a drop because um, I do have a little bit of oh, trouble right. with heights, mm -hmm. but I was fine. I just wanted to add that, that, mm -hmm. you know, if you might, you maybe see the photos and it looks like, oh, is that going to be a drop? I was fine. Um, now, there is a notorious part of the hike called the box, which is about four miles in the heart of a canyon, in the canyon. Well, the whole thing's a canyon. <laughs> right, and but at the bottom of the canyon... It, and just the way that it is, it's the hottest part. Yeah, it traps in heat down there. There's not a lot of wind blowing through, so it's actually the hottest part. You can have drastically different temperatures. You can have 60 degrees on the surface at the rim and, and 100 down at the box. It's, it's, it's crazy, so uh, be ready for that change of temperatures. All right? And people recommend going at earlier times versus later times. We had no trouble in the box. It was beautiful through the Yeah, box. what you have to consider is if you're starting in the morning, right, and then you're hiking 10 miles or something like this, 12, 15 miles, well, then you're hitting the box, which is like the hottest part, also in the middle of the day, the hottest part of the day. <laughs> but, but again, we didn't really have a problem in that. No, um, that, was, that was the part that we were, I think, most, um, one of the parts we were concerned about. It was warm, at. but it was It was warm. warm. We did stop at Phantom Ranch at the little cafe and had um, the lemonade. lemonade. We which had the lemonade. Get the lemonade. It yeah, it was nice. So true. That actually, that lemonade gave me a little bit of an upset stomach, which hmm. is weird. I don't get upset no. stomachs a lot of times, but it just made it was like. Ugh. Huh. And the other thing I'll say about the cafe guys um, is, well, first off, was it only cash? We didn't. Car, we didn't buy the lemonade. I was in the bathroom. Oh, our friends. And our got friends it for went us. ahead. Oh, okay. And they, they got it for us. Was there a trash can you could put the cup in? I or think do you they could put it, you to carry that out? I think if you bought it at the cafe, you could put your trash okay. in the trash yeah. can. We did. But otherwise, you need to carry out your own trash. The other thing I was going to say about the, the cafe is there is a time that it's open. So, like, when my friend and I did rim to rim to rim, we it was open when we first went through. And then at the end, you know, very later part of the day when we were coming back it, it was closed so just keep that in it's mind it does close check. at some yeah. point right. yeah um i don't know if we mentioned it before but you right. could do north kaibab to south kaibab i think it's kaibab kaibab or bright angel to north or south right yeah so north. so basically so, how it looks is you've got bright angel here you've got and we'll show the map bright angel south kaibab and then they meet around Phantom Ranch, and then they go up to, kind of like a Y, they go up to the North Kaibab. We chose doing Bright Angel because it is uh, uh, not as high as the North Rim was. It is also, it has water sources. So mm -hmm. it has bathrooms and water sources. The, North, the South Kaibab Trail does not have bathrooms or water sources, and it's also... Um, really exposed so you're gonna be hitting the sun and it's just a lot of people choose don't do that one or if they do that they do that in the morning going down it's just so that's yeah. that's why we did that route now yeah. um most of the trail was rocky it like rocky like solid rock all right um it was not really loose footing a lot mm -hmm. 
No, because um, it's, you know, people are so going well, through most yeah, of the day. Yeah, so well trafficked. Right. There is sand right oh, after the north. The sand, um, after you cross the. Phantom Ranch, after you cross the bridge. After you the cross the really long Colorado metal bridge. River. That's cool. Yeah, the you're bri- crossing the, the Colorado cool. River. The yeah, bridge the, was cool. the bridge was like moving a little bit. It was so cool. <laughs> Um, but then you're hitting sand for that maybe just rough. half a mile. It wasn't long, but it was still, that was And rough. that's also when it started getting hotter, which is when we started climbing so, back up. So, before we talk about it getting hotter, uh, the animals that we came across during the day, um, we did run into a donkey train mm-hmm. on their way down, and we were starting to go up yep. the Bright Angel. I mean, it took... A minute or two, and it was neat. So we It just... was pretty neat, but just be aware, they're going through there. Um, one thing to be aware of is they're going to cause dust. They're going to kick up dust. <laughs> but, you know, it settles. The other yeah. thing is, don't be afraid of the donkeys. They are, yeah. I mean, just stand off to the side. The, the rangers or whoever on the donkeys will tell you what to do. Just stay over there or something like that. They might stop the donkeys and let you pass. Maybe they're mules. I guess they're mules. Well, whatever the train is. They're gonna um they'll they might stop them and let you pass or they might ask you to step off to the side while they pass. Um but they understand like if you're not used to being around animals like that, you could kind of be a little nervous, like if you're gonna get kicked. Just move slowly and just confidently. The thing is like yeah. those animals are doing that day in and day out, right? I mean like there's like at least four groups of those mules down there of those trains. They're just coming and going. They're used to to people walking and stuff like that. So don't be too scared of them, okay, guys? Right, right. Um, we did see a goat. Oh yeah. <laughs> a goat that actually came on the path as we were going up. Um, we also saw. I, I'm pretty sure we saw a deer that was just chilling on the path and was like, "Oh, I'm, I don't feel like getting off for a little bit." Possibly. Um, when you did rim to rim to rim. You did see a scorpion. Yeah, we did. I, I did it, but that was only at night, right? So my friend and I were <laughs> hiking back, and, and it was taking us longer than we expected, and, and that was coming up Bright Angel, um, and when we were just, like, sitting on one of the rocks on the path just to take a break, sure enough, you know, I could see, like, a scorpion walk. And, and like I that. think there's rattlesnakes Yeah, we passed well. a lady who was coming right around Indian, I think it's called Indian Garden, yeah, um, so. And she had said she had just passed a couple of rattlers right off the trail. So we did it. they are there. Yep. But we didn't run into rattlesnakes on our hike. So it just depends. It just yep. depends. Um, uh, let's talk about the coming up Bright Angel and, and, and your experience, I guess. So we also think it's very important to go at your own pace. Don't feel like you have to go faster. Um Personally, I'm very much a, I want to go fast, I want to go hard, and then I burn out. Um, right. I, that's happened in a lot of my training for running and hiking. I, I, I want to go faster than is good for me. And our friend um, who hiked with us is great at pacing me. Her pace is slower than mine. We and call ourselves the sloth, the hiking, sloth team. hiking team. Go sloth hiking team. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so typically she would pace us and there was one point where I stopped maybe to get I water don't why. whatever the reason she was up ahead and our friend said, "Oh, just hurry up and catch up." And right. in my rush to catch up instead of going at the pace that she had been going, I overheated. I almost passed out. I started yeah. to see the spots. Yeah, we just found a little spot underneath. I sat Fortuna- under. Fortunately, because that part was pretty exposed with, yeah. with the sun, we found a spot where um, uh, a rock kind of formed like a cave, and she it was open. great. We could just like crouch inside of that. And she she drank some tailwind, I think, and I did. Um, so so that was nice. And then just the the problem with with heat exhaustion, guys, is once you hit that, then you are. It's hard to get back out it of is. that, to eat things, to drink things it after is. that. And so it's like you got to really take a break, cool down, sip water. When your stomach's not getting upset from sipping it, you're not lightheaded, you feel good, slowly get going again. Yeah, so. yeah. So that's when I had the tailwind and mm-hmm. I took the cooling rag. So every water source, you wet it and you just 
put it on. Yeah, it was Be- so nice. Oh, uh, I will say beautiful views come in. There, so the, the I mean, there's time. there's good views everywhere. The when you're coming time. in the North Rim, you're looking down into the Grand Canyon. There's great views. When you're going through the box next to the river, it's neat to be walking next to the river yeah. with the canyon walls. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, getting down by Phantom Ranch with like the mules and other people are hanging out and drinking the lemonade and yeah. and you see all the little like some people are camped and you got the yeah, ranger there's, huts. There's Those are really and, neat. Yeah, that little cabins. The whole and thing. then and then Bright Angel coming back up as it just switches back and, and you forth turn and you're around. Up. It's just. It's just like you're going to awesome. turn around and then take a picture and be like, wow. And then you're going to keep going up higher and you're going to turn around and you're going to be like, wow. And you're going to take another yeah. picture. It's just beautiful. I will address the bathrooms and yes. um, water. Water wasn't a problem going up. Nope. Um, but the bathroom, bathrooms were honestly, they were, they were pretty good. Yeah. Considering people have been using them all day and, you know, people are sweaty or whatever. And, and like, it's, they weren't for, that bad, all things considered. For off-the-grid bathrooms, yeah, they weren't yeah. that bad. Um, I, I don't remember them being that bad. I will say another difficult thing with going up is you, going up Bright Angel, it's pretty steep. And you're just doing these switchbacks. <laughs> And it, it can seem like it's taking forever. It because, took forever. Because you see the the top right here, and you're looking up at it all the time, but you're not going like that. You're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, oh. back and forth. And so it's just like, holy cow, how are we not there yet? I think uh, the longest part was getting to the three-mile bathroom and the mile-and-a-half yes, bathroom. Yeah, getting it did from, not feel like... Getting from Indian Garden up to the three-mile, three that mile. took a while. That felt like it took a while. And I don't know what the distance the was between the two, mm-hmm. but that mile-and-a-half... But that's cool because you're past it. You're probably, at least the time that we were at, at the end of the day, a lot of other people are doing that, too, and you're all once, talking about... yeah. Once we got, yeah, to the mile-and-a-half... And the three mile bathroom, mm-hmm. you were running into more people who were, you know, they were doing a day hike, but not the whole Grand Canyon day. Right, right. <laughs> but you're 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 hiking you're up with people see. who have done it all day, and yeah. you guys you're pushing them through, yeah. and you're kind of hopping. You're going to take a break, and yeah. then they're going to pass yeah. you. They're going to take a break, but you, then you're going to start passing the other people who aren't as sweaty and smelly as you <laughs> who are just coming down from the right angel trail just to like a mile and a half down just to take views yeah. you know be whatever um i definitely cried a lot yeah and on it was the neat. trail like and, and the sun was setting like yeah. right then it was beautiful yeah. um good nice colors of like the hit you know the, yeah. with the sunset but in the, also nice colors of like all the layers of the rock yeah. coming up the the um, Grand Canyon, and there were other people there who were just enjoying the view, right? Who aren't crazy to try it in the <laughs> day. Um, but it was it was a really neat moment to be able to get to share that, to finally get to do that after you know months of training, mm-hmm. and then get to share that with each other and our friends yeah, right there. Our too. best friends. Yeah, so so much fun. Um, and I then, definitely did a joyful sob. When it was actually done, just so <laughs> it was great. It was great. Um, so we finished about seven twenty overall. I think it was about fifteen. About fifteen hours. Fifteen ish hours. Fourteen hours. Fourteen, fifteen, something like that. Something. Lastly, what would we do differently? What were some of the things like? Ugh, I wish we would have known. Um, I carried too much food. And water. Yeah, I think I might have taken two to three thousand, but I think you had over I three thousand. You had, might have had like five thousand calories, I might have had four to three five, to four thousand, even forty-five. I had too yes. much food, so, and I had too much water. Generally, I think they say about two hundred to three hundred calories per hour, depending on your intensity. And so, you know, you figure for us, if we took fifteen hours, that's about three thousand calories, 000, yeah. right? Um, and this is 45. different for for Pete for everybody. Yeah. But I think you took about 45. You might have had another peanut butter sandwich left, peanut butter and honey yeah. sandwich left. I, I think, think you I took packed... two or three. No, I think I took three. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, and I think you might have had a clip bar. So, I mean, it's nice to have it and not need it. Right. But um, but I think you did have a little bit more than you needed. Because mm-hmm. um, remember, also, you can buy stuff at the cafe. Could you buy food or was it just the lemonade? You might have been able to buy food. I don't know because we, we didn't buy the okay. lemonade. Now, at the lodge, at the North Rim, we expected to have a coffee maker in the room. We expected oh, to have right. a microwave. Yep, none of that. <laughs> um, so that's where, again, 
double check before you go. Uh, if you're in that Facebook group we mentioned, rim to pe- rim, people yeah. will will say what they had. Um, and it, like I don't think there, so there was no microwave, so we we had had we you know food. banana and and oatmeal or something to heat but up we in just, the microwave. We just had the oatmeal with the hot water from the faucet, yeah. right? So just understand that your room may or may not right, have that right. stuff. Right, and. Oh, when, coffee. We when got we coffee found the... out, yeah, when we found out that we didn't have the coffee maker, yep. we went over to that cafe and the day before. The day before, mm-hmm. which is another, you know, you want to have some cushion in your preparation. Um, so we bought cold coffee mm-hmm. at Starbucks. Cold yeah, whatever coffee it was. Things. Yeah, just something that we could have the next morning, so we'd have coffee. Right, we did have a fridge. So yes, we did. It's. Yeah, you and you may not know what's in your room. Oh, we also had. There. I will. I do have to mention. We also had a little visitor, of oh. the four-legged little rodent kind. Yeah, we had a little little mouse running around, uh, <laughs> trying to like I don't know get into the trash can or something like that. Yeah. I kept hearing this crinkling that was yeah. keeping me up. I did not appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to the lodge, we did stay in the same room with our friends. So we had two separate beds. Mm-hmm. Um, I did have a white noise. I, I played white noise on my Spotify. Um, so I think that could be important if you need white noise to sleep. Maybe not, that, not everybody. Oh, not one everybody. thing to consider is what clothes are you going to wear Yeah. the day before. So like for us, we had to get a ride on one day, the day before the hike. Mm-hmm. And then we, we rode there, and then we're hanging at the lodge, hanging out at the lodge for a few hours in the evening, and then we're sleeping. And then we're hiking the next day, right? So some people just wear the same clothes. I did. They just, yeah. I want to say I think our friends we all did, too. did. I The only thing is, I, I think I brought a pair of socks that... Um, and they, maybe they were falling apart anyway. You yes, were I brought a pair of socks them. that had like a hole in one of the toes... And um, and I tossed that, and may, maybe an old T-shirt too. I think I had maybe, an old T-shirt yeah. that had like some yeah. holes or something stains, and I just wore that for the ride up there. And then I tossed that in the trash can at the at the room. Um, and then so the only thing that I was carrying on the hike were the clothes that I was wearing, right. not right. The, not the extra. Yeah. So that's an yeah. option. And maybe taking bags that you're okay tossing. For all of those things that you don't need. Bags. Yeah, like we needed to carry the food that we brought. Oh, and yes. Right. So taking like the, that. I mean, the trash yeah. bag or plastic bag yeah. or whatever, but carrying some of that. Right. Right. That stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our experience. Uh, let us know. It was the, so awesome, guys. It was so great. It's a bucket list thing. Yeah. Some people want to do it and never get to do it. It was beautiful. It was amazing. It, it, and it was just neat amazing. to experience it that with. Now, look, we also are not knocking taking it in a few days Mm-mm. because there is something to say about taking your time and really yeah. experiencing it, yeah. um, and that's fine. But, you know, we got to experience it, I think, you know, as much as we wanted, and we yeah. also got to try the challenge of seeing right. if we could do right. it in the day, right. and that was neat, too. So yeah. just our experience. Hope you guys get to. Yeah. Life is too short not to go see the Grand Canyon, guys. Yeah. Have you hiked rim to rim what was your experience let us know in the comments below it can also help others that are looking into it and And if you have any uh questions ask us if you like the video please hit like and if you want to see more please subscribe um it helps us and if you want to buy some of the products that also helps us uh have more time to be able to yes we get a you know small uh profit a small little bit of income Mm -hmm. coming in so that we can spend more time making videos like this. Right. Right. Cool. All right. We'll see you guys.